In today's video, we were supposed to be doing a review of this all-in-one cooler, but there was a few issues with it in our early testing. When we actually connected up the spider web of a mess of cabling that they've got in this, the radiator fan that they provided did a bit of a fizzle, a bit of a pop, and then it died, or at least the RGB did. So we're not going to be doing a full review of this because we actually purchased it to do a bit of modding and we didn't need the fan anyway. So we're going to get rid of the fan and we're going to continue to mod it. Now, I originally purchased this cooler for our testing rig, and that's because we're, at the moment we're currently using a Noctua Tyra cooler, but it's a little bit big in there, particularly when we're trying to get graphics cards in and out. So I bought this all-in-one cooler with the hope that with a 120 millimeter radiator at the back of the case, it would be more than enough for the CPU, and it would add a little bit of RGB color, but obviously we had some problems. Now, we were going to review this fully, but we're not going to bother doing that now. So we'll do a little bit of a mini review. Now, I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce the name of this. I think it's a Gam Diaz. I'm not quite sure, but it's a Xion E2 Lite 120 all-in-one cooler. Now, the reviews on this were exceptionally good, so I thought I'd pick it up. It was reasonably cheap. It was in an Amazon sale, and it would have been perfect for the job that we wanted. As far as the kit goes, you get all the fittings that it comes with, and this includes LGA 1700, which is important for us, considering we have an LGA 1700 board. An overcomplicated fan system with lots and lots of cables, which we'll get into in a minute, and that is supposed to be an RGB fan, even though ours doesn't work anymore. And then, of course, you have the 120mm radiator, some nice braided cables, and a pump. Now, during our early testing with this, the pump and the radiator system are actually perfectly fine. They are reasonably good quality. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It works perfectly fine, and so does the RGB. The fan, though, not so much. Now, the fan we had some issues with, and as you can tell, with all these ridiculous amount of wires on it, it's probably the reason why it went. Now, I'm assuming this is just a one-off manufacturing defect, because like I said before, there's lots of brilliant reviews on this online, so I'm just going to assume that it's a bit of a one-off. But the thing that really confuses me the most and really concerns me is the way that they've cabled these up. Now, it wouldn't be such an issue because we are obviously going to get rid of this fan and we're going to be putting a different fan on this, and I'll show you that in a minute. But there are more issues to it than you can suspect. So, of course, on this fan here, we have some ridiculous SATA connection. You may question why you actually need that, but it's quite a confusing layout. It's very overcomplicated. Then we have these RGB connections, and then we also have a PWM connection. So the principle of this is that you can use these RGB standard pin headers to actually override the RGB for the fan. You can use the PWM connection, which only has two connections. So that actually does the tachometer and the PWM signal, and it gets its power from the SATA. But that also includes the lighting. Now, if you plug this in straight into a power supply, you will get the RGB rainbow, unless you're actually overriding it with the three pin standard. The problem comes when we actually get to the pump side. If you have a look at the pump, it does use a three pin standard motherboard header to power the pump, which is great but then the RGB is actually on this proprietary connection. And to be able to plug that in, you have to actually plug it into the fan. For anybody wanting to actually buy one of these and then replace the fan for a matching one in your current system, which is exactly what we want to do, you're pretty much stuck. So we've had to do some modding on this. Now, of course, the fan is absolute junk, so we're gonna get rid of that. Which brings us to the pump. Now for this pump, we actually wanted, and the, and the radiator, we wanted to put our own fan on it. And if you remember our testing rig, which we'll go and get in a minute, you'll know that we use the Sahara Gaming Pirate Eye Fans. And of course we want that to match, but there's a few other little tweaks that we want to do to this. To be able to get the Sahara Gaming fan running on this, we need to do some modifications to cables. And I also want to remove or get rid of the logo that's in the middle of the pump. Now our plan for this pump is to actually take the logo in the middle or at least the little mirrored disc that they've got in the middle and we're going to cover it up with some of this. Now this is carbon printed vinyl and I thought it kind of matches our channel a little bit but we'll still get the RGB around it so it's going to look pretty cool but it's going to get rid of that really weird logo in the middle. Now, to remove the top of the pump we need to get a plastic thing and, and get it in there. You, you shouldn't really use a screwdriver for this because you're going to damage your plastic but we need to get one underneath the cap and it should just pop off just like that. It is a little bit awkward to get the bottom piece off so we just need to run the tool round the edge and it should get the clips off the bottom and then we have the top off like that. This exposes just the top of the pump which is just a simple ring really of ARGB lighting and the cabling and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to actually modify this in terms of cabling, we've actually made some adapters and we'll show you them in a minute but First, we need to get rid of this logo. To get rid of this logo, I need to obviously pop it out. And if we flip it over, we can see that there's just two little pegs here with a bit of glue. 
just scratching that glue off with pretty much anything really, a screwdriver or something like that, should allow you to just pull that one off there. You can see the glue's just falling off. It's not great, but we're going to have to re-glue it back on afterwards. We should be able to just drop the disc out. Now that is the uh, piece of plastic where the lighting comes through. Get rid of those little bits there. Then we have this little diffuser piece that comes out like that. And then we have the little disc with the mirror on it. Now this does have the logo in it, if we can actually see there. We've got the logo on and then the light would shine through there, but we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to peel the plastic off and we'll also get rid of the mirror. We don't want the mirror either. And then we're going to come to our piece of vinyl. Now for the vinyl, I'm going to get a bit of a cutting disc. Stick it over here like this. Put the disc over like that. Unfortunately, I couldn't purchase any smaller piece of vinyl, so we'll go with what we've got. We'll cut down these lines. We'll just cut a little piece off just so that we can not waste so much. That should actually just pull us a piece off. Then with the vinyl, I did, it doesn't really matter which way round this goes. I'm not really fussed on which way the pattern goes because it's, it's a carbon print, so it'll look good either way. We'll peel that off there. And then we'll just stick this down on top. Now we'll run a knife all the way around the edge and it should just trim it off perfectly for the circle. After we've trimmed that vinyl off now, we have just a bit of a carbon print on top of the uh, disc. That's actually looking pretty good. It's pretty clean cut using a Stanley knife. So that's worked really, really well. And we need to now stick it all back together again. We will need to put some kind of glue or sticky pad on the back of it. And we do have some of that glue somewhere. so. We'll just insert this into here and then obviously we want to just put a dab of glue on either side flipping that over you can see the nice carbon print and the rgb is going to be all the way around now the replacement fan is going to be one of these this is the sahara gaming pirate eye and we do have these running in our system we actually have 11 of these running in the system so to use any other fan would actually make it look a bit silly but these do come with their own little quirks if we open this up we can show you what we mean the pirate eye fan is a modular fan and of course you need one of these little cards to click onto the bottom but these cards actually come with their own proprietary connection and that will do the fan speed as well as the rgb now this does need to go to a sahara gaming controller which we have installed in our system but i think we're going to be doing something a little bit different mounting this fan on the radiator isn't going to be a problem but when we go to the rgb of the actual pump we have this little proprietary connection here now you could just splice these wires off and connect it straight to a motherboard one and you'd have to do some soldering and stuff like that but we've gone a little bit cleverer using the old connection from the old fan we actually cut off one of the little pigtails and we did a bit of a solder job together to a Sahara gaming plug. Now just plugging this in like this into the pump and plugging that into the Sahara gaming controller, we will actually send all of the lighting and power to the pump. So now we've got the power and the RGB, it's ARGB, on the pump working in sync with the rest of the system. Now with our extra cable in, we have the fan and the fan is going to be a little bit of a problem for us because the power of the fan does go to the controller. We can use the controller to actually go to the motherboard and power the fan via the motherboard or the CPU header. The problem is that all the fans on that controller will then go to that speed. So I want this independent. Now Sahara Gaming do make these little cards where you can actually have them come off of here with standard connections, a PWM connection for the fan as well as a standard ARGB. Now we don't want to go that far because A, I'd have to order one and wait for it to come in and I don't want to do that. And B, we don't want the RGB actually controlled from the motherboard separately. We still want it controlled from the controller because that syncs all the RGB in the system. So instead, we've decided to make our own. Now, because we had so many fans with our system, we had a total of 13 turn up for it and we only used 11. And because they're modular and they go together, you have loads of these little cards left over. I have something like 10 of these actually sitting around now. So what I've done is I've actually taken one apart, taken this little clip off here and soldered in an old four pin PWM connection. That was off of an old fan. I just chopped it off, went into the block, unsoldered the existing wires and soldered this on. Now that we have a controller or a card that will actually connect to the motherboard. So this fan will be independent and it'll be able to drive up and down with the CPU. We also have a new connection into our pump. What we need to do now is put it all back together again and start getting installed in the system. So for those of you that don't know, this is our test rig. We recently built it in a video. We'll link it at the end if you're interested in that, but it is housed in a Sahara Gaming P480, a brand new case from the company. 
and it's completely loaded up with fans. These are the Pirate Eye fans that we were talking about, and this is the one that we need to remove to be able to get this cooler installed. We have already removed the Noctua cooler, so as you can see, there's lots of space in there now. So we'll take this fan out, and then we'll have a look at how we actually install this cooler. Okay, so after a ridiculous amount of fuss, we finally managed to get the cooler on. It is an absolute pain in the butt, and I don't know how this thing actually got decent reviews. It seems to have decent reviews on Amazon, and from the YouTube videos I can find, they have decent reviews as well. But I did notice one thing, and a lot of those videos actually missed the installation process. I'm not sure why they did that, although maybe they did because it's such a pain. We have now got it fit though, so it's all installed and ready to go. We just need to be able to get this radiator in there, and to do that, we need to install our fan. Now our fan, we're gonna go the same way around that we did before, so we're gonna install it that way. That way the cables are gonna go out the back of the system. Okay, so we've got everything back together again now, and we've also got the top on. The glue has dried, and it's actually stuck in there pretty nice. It's looking pretty cool with the little uh, carbon fiber middle on it now, so all we need to do, everything's wired up, all the fans are plugged in, everything's bolted down, is we just need to give it a test. So let's hit the on switch and see what happens. As we can see, the whole system has come alive. All the fans are coming on. They're not the quietest fans in the world, I will admit, but they look pretty cool. We've got four in the top, four in the bottom, two on the back plate, and we've got our Pirate Eye fan now installed onto a radiator. The actual uh, cooler looks pretty cool. It's just got this ring around it. We don't have the logo in the middle anymore, which is exactly what we wanted. And we've got these pipes kind of out of the way. They will adjust a little bit more up into the top of the fans without touching them. So I think the system is actually looking pretty good. We can now actually turn our PCI slots the other way around so we can get our vertically mounted graphics card in, which we couldn't before because the cooler was just too high. You couldn't actually drop a graphics card in it. So I think that's the next thing that we'll do. Next time we actually do a graphics card review and we use this machine, you guys will see it because we're gonna have the graphics card vertically mounted in here. We've got the cables ready to go. So what did we actually learn from this video? We learned that as PC builders, we go through a lot of trouble to get things looking nice. You don't really need to do any of this work. You can just slap these things in and hook them all together with the silly wiring that they come up with and they'll generally work. But I like to actually play with things, get things modded, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. The other thing we learned was avoid this brand. Maybe not the brand totally, but this cooler in particular. Make sure it is one of the versions that do have the proper fittings and the proper cables and things like that. Not this one, which they seem to have just gone half a job on. If you go to the website and you search for the Chiron or however you pronounce that, you'll find two of these. One of them, go to the instructions and it will show you all the little pegs and everything that you get and the perfect mounting mechanism and all that kind of stuff. The other one, this one, not so good. We managed to get it to work, obviously, but I would not recommend this product to anybody. And I'm very surprised that many people out there that are doing reviews on these are actually recommending them. If you like this kind of video where we do modifications and things to different builds, make sure you drop it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you in the next one.